the biggest jazz trend from the last decade. Baby, baby, baby. That would be the reharmonization of pop songs, probably. From Dirty Loop starting the hype with their incredibly heartfelt demolitions of famous pop songs, kinda felt like jazz musicians gained back some power. And now we can see through the likes of Jacob Collier, it became even more mainstream recently. But it doesn't necessarily need to be heavy reharmonizations. Mashups can often also be counted as reharmonizations, as melodies get integrated together in similar but different chord progressions. But what makes reharmonization so appealing then? And I'll admit it's one of my personal favorite hobbies. Well, you get to potentially totally reframe songs and adapt them to your own taste completely. Like when I think of Baby by Justin Bieber now, I simply can't unhear the version from Dirty Loops anymore. So it stays a lot of fun in my head. I can audiate their version whenever I need it, whenever the song gets slightly suggested. They completely fixed this annoying song for me. And you can do that too with your most annoying songs. That's the power of reharmonization. While you certainly can use favorite songs to reharmonize, I would argue it's even more satisfying to those you don't like but can't really get around. I personally omit watching TV or listening to the radio, but I find myself often having this terribly annoying loop of one of the hit songs of the moment in my head. So let me show you in a second how to gain back the power over your mind when you get terrorized in this way. However, I like some of them really heavy reharmonizations myself. There is also lots of fun in between the original and the Dirty Loops mode too. Not every chord needs to be an F16 sharp 14. There are also plenty of ways even your mom would dig. So let's check how you can get from this. <laughs> eventually this. Rather easily in different levels. As you might have recognized already, I'll use this song by Carly Rae Jepsen called Call Me Maybe but then instrumental. This is one of those songs that will keep looping in my head even when just having heard one bar of the refrain. Here is a very basic version with the original chord progression and the melody. It helps to analyze first a bit what is happening in the original before we apply different chords to it. Notice how the melody is a G triad in inversion in the first two bars. Then there is a little variation, but the G and B from the triad stay central. And the last phrase ends also solidly in G, with only the supertonic added in between the B and the G. Rhythmically, it has the chords coming in short kicks, which, as we will see later, comes in very handy because when you're using dance harmony, you have more headroom with short chord kicks that don't fall together with a melody note. Which brings me to the only rule there really is, the chords need to fit the melody. It can be reframed as tensions, surely, but general things like a flat 9 on a major 7 chord generally are not really accepted as a nice sound. So rule of thumb while choosing your pop song, the more dense and variable the melody is, the lesser your options get. Certainly with borrowing the chords from outside the key. So most of today's radio hits will do. Here is option one, the pedal note. The most bulletproof one because this simple technique always works. Let's say your chord progression is a simple one, four, five, one in major. Then you can keep the root of your first step degree as a pedal note, for example. And did you think this will never win? Well, look at me, I'm coming back again. I got a taste of love and a simple 
Here you could hear the bass notes stay the same in quarter notes and the chords changed on top. Also in 1, 4, 5, 1 parallel minor it works perfectly like they did in the intro. In this case of Call Me Maybe, I actually use the subdominant function, the fourth step degree as a pedal note. And you pretty much can safely choose between the tonic, subdominant or dominant as a pedal note. They will all work but have different degrees of tension. The tonic having the least and the dominant having the most. The subdominant pedal note I'm going with here is also the first chord of the original progression. So the first chord is what's to be expected actually. The next chord keep on being actually the same in function like the G over C bass note because it's now like a C major 9 without the third. You might already have noticed it but the first bar also suggests a C major 7 sound anyways because of the strong B on a downbeat in the original melody. The chord after that has way more color, it makes the C Lydian with all the upper structure tensions on a C major you can have with the D, F sharp and the A. Then in combination with the E minor we end up again with a C major 7 basically. So in the end we got a little bit more of a Lydian vibe to it and some automatic different voice leading than when you just would have put a C major 7 all the time for example. Option 2. Add tensions yourself to your own taste. <laughs> With mostly these repeating chord progressions, when you add some tensions, you can do a lot more in voice leading whenever one of the chords comes back. As you hear the first five chords here stay quite similar to the original, just with a little bit of salt, and the latter two are a little bit more salty. Mm, that's a little salty. <laughs> A add 2 over G is a way to make the first step degree Lydian and that sounds rather outside because this time we are adding a sharp 11 on the first step degree the C sharp and that's outside the key. But it resolves nicely to the C from the next chord. You can go way wilder than this already but Keep in mind that it's a little bit like relationships, maybe also resolve after you go wild. Option 3 and 4. Exchange bass notes and chord functions. I applied these together because they have a similar role to play. Let's go back for a moment to the most basic function of the main chords. The first step degree is our tonic or, or home chord. The fourth step degree is the subdominant and gives some mild tension. And the fifth step degree is the dominant which urges to go back to our home chord, the first step degree. But all the diatonic steps in between being the second, third, sixth and seventh step degree can be seen under subcategories of these three main functions. The second step degree is tight and exchangeable for the four chord, the third and sixth step degree can replace the tonic and the fifth step degree is tied with the seventh step half dim. So let's exchange some of those and let's see what happens. <laughs> see the 4 got substituted by the 2nd step degree which is a minor chord now, the 1 by the 3rd step degree also a minor chord and then the 5th step degree I put the 3rd of that triad in the bass so we get a changing bass line. I took that idea of a separate bass line a little bit further and added some notes in between. Simple but yet effective way to elaborate on the existing chords. Option 5 put in some functional dominant 7s. Now let's use some chords that give way more direction to the next chord coming. Dominant 7s. <laughs> No, it's not only the traditional secondary dominant principle you can use, there are more interesting options available. Still, the most simple use is of course to introduce a chord by its relative 
5 dominant, which you can do on the original 5th step degree or before any chord using its relative 5. This is all called a secondary dominant. Here, however, the first dominant is a tritone substitute from that secondary dominant. The dominant that leads into or aimed at chord here, D, is an A7. But that would repeat the A minor chord that comes right before in the bass. So we can exchange that with the dominant three wall tones away, E flat 7. And now it gets a little bit more of a deferring bass line. The D is the actual 5 in our original key of G, so this one is really easy to make dominant and you won't hear probably anything special there. But now it doesn't resolve to the expected G chord here, because I inserted there a dominant 3 chord sharp 5 to anticipate on the next chord after that. Always remember inserting dominants always work when you go backwards. I have a chord I want to aim at, so how can I introduce that chord? Well, here you see it resolve half a step up, and why that works, you'd have to ask Snow White and her dominant seven dwarfs. But basically, the B pushes to C, the D sharp pushes to E, the G is the common note between the two chords and the sharp 5, and the A is the only note that needs to jump a wall tone. So basically the force is right. Next you see a diminished chord, and yes, also this can be seen as a dominant 7 function, although it's not an actual dominant. It prepares for that D that comes after, and the relative dominant of this D is, which we already mentioned before, a7. If you would add a flat 9 to that A7 chord, you end up with an upper structure of a C sharp diminished 7 chord, starting from the third of that A7 flat 9. So that makes it in fact a secondary dominant in function. Option 6. Constant structure. Constant structure is the most hip and outlandish one and you might have heard it through pop musicians that go for a certain chord color, for example major 7, and then moving that structure around. This can sound really fresh and surprising because you will be thrown in and out the key center. But this is also the most dangerous one to collide with the melody. You will have to move out of the key center if you want to have at least more than two or three options here. For example, in this G major scale, let's say you want to go with a major 7 chord, there are just two diatonically in here, on the G, the first step degree, and on a C chord, the fourth step degree. Modal interchange can be really helpful here as it works to insert the flat 2, flat 3, flat 6 and flat 7 as a major 7 chord basically. And very short without going too deep into the theory, it works. But even don't let that limit you. If the melody fits the chord, try away. But because all of that, you'll hear these kind of reharmonizations mostly on places where the melody has a long note or where there is some space in the melody. Here I started very connected to G major with the 6th step degree uh, E minor 7 chord. I actually wanted to go with this minor chord structure and I tried to go chromatically down but ended up having to adapt that E flat to major 7 so it fitted really nicely with the melody. Now it worked perfectly. For the next part I decided to keep the major 7 ID and I went with the basic principles of using the modal interchange options, still needing to fit the melody of course. Later, because two notes didn't fit the E flat major 7, as you can see here, I made the fifth step major 7th 2 to make those melody notes fit. Notice how that's also the most outlandish chord in this progression here. <laughs> Try this with any chord structure, 
it all has a different eye widening effect. This was actually a lesson preparation for um, arranging class I teach other lessons. But after having prepared this lesson, I felt also like expanding a bit more on it. It's pretty addictive. So I also added some variation on the melody, got Jake involved unwantingly, and it quickly got out of hand. <laughs> I'll post in a week how that turned out. I hope this video helped you to get started with reharmonization if you didn't already, because it can be a lot of fun. The first few are very simple ones. You can even sneak in at wedding gigs, the latter ones at funerals. So which pop song gets unwillingly stuck inside your head? Let me know in the comment section below. I would love to know that. In case you'd be interested in more stuff like this, you can subscribe and if you like this, it would be really nice if you would tap that like button too. I'm Jorgen Reners from Sharp 11 Music, until next time.